So this lecture is actually valid for any kind of mass transfer uh, process. We are going to be analyzing this for the flash ROM or the flash operation, if you want to see it that way. But actually, we can apply it to several processes. So just take that in mind and keep it for future works or courses, okay? So operation lines are very commonly used in separation processes and mass transfer. This is literally a line in which we are going to be operating our process. This will typically take place in a initial spot that will be, let's say the status quo, or if we are talking about a block, will be the initial point and the final spot, which will be here. The final spot will be based, of course, on real life scenarios. You cannot say that you will uh, achieve 99% uh, distillation on ethanol and water because that will be not possible. We have a isotrop. Of course, you will try to get the best uh, final spot based on your design and the based on the equilibrium. Okay, so initially you have the initial conditions, which is of course typically the way you get your stream. Maybe you can change temperatures and pressures in order to change that initial spot. But the main idea is to get to the final spot. Typically, there will be a change regarding the position in the equilibrium. So I don't know if you remember, guys, about binary diagrams and all that, but we have this diagram and we typically have this 45 degree line in which, of course, the molar composition of the liquid equals the vapor composition of the paper. So that's why we have this straight line. We use it because it's a good point to have a guide, especially when we have much greater uh, equilibrium lines which cross that line and so on. In this specific case, we have a normal curve right here, which is the equilibrium line. And as you can see, we have several lines inside that. So let me show you this. So this is our operation range. Of course, these are not the operation points. This is just the operation range that you could in theory operate within. The driving force of the process, I know probably driving force sounds kind of familiar from transport phenomena or so. Remember that the driving force is most always the change in concentration that you know that you are in the liquid phase, you have X composition, which will favor going to the vapor phase to achieve Y composition. The operation or operating line is also based on the material balance because you gotta have the compositions in the initial state and in the final state. Sometimes with the material balance alone, you can solve it. And this will be applied to many types of operations. Flash drums or flash systems, as we are doing right now. You have taken my gas absorption course, then gas absorption. If you have been taking distillation uh, courses or uh, the subject of the distillation alone, you know that you have the enriching section, stripping section, maybe even the feed line. All these are operation lines. Batch distillation, which will depend whether or not you are using uh, constant uh, composition in the distillate or if you're using constant reflux. Liquid, liquid extraction, humidification, if you're drying or adding humidity to certain thing, that also depends on the operation line and now we have the operation line of a flash so q will be of course the amount of liquid in versus the feed or you can also say that this is f because you can relate them and the slope will be this one right here on the operation of the flash you will always have this part right here make no worries we're going to be working towards obtaining this line but as you can see here this is the intercept this is the slope another intersect with the equilibrium, another intersect with the x equals to y line. So this, as you know, lines are infinite. So you could also even add an intersect here, but that will be not that much of interest. Typical interest is this intercept, the slope, intersect with the equilibrium line, intersect with the x equal y line. And remember that f is the quality of the vapor, that will be vapor over the feed and Q remember that this is liquid over the feed. 
As stated before, we have several type of operation lines. I just wanted to show you this batch rectifier distillator. Will depend, of course, on the type of operation, whether or not you're using constant reflux or whether or not you're using constant distillate composition. I love this case because in this case, time changes conditions. So you're going to have a shift in the operation line. The operation changes with respect to time. And here, operation does not depend with time because this is a continuous process. In the gas absorber, if you remember, guys, there is no intersection between the lines. Uh, hopefully, you know why. I'm not going to explain you. They are quasi-parallel lines. Of course, you know that eventually they get near and near. The difference between these two points get each time shorter and shorter. And you got minimum operation points, which is interesting. You can get those depending on the type of operation, not always. In binary fractional distillation, you will have three lines, which is the first one, the rectifying, which enriches the material. You will have the stripping section, which gets rid of the most volatile component. And very important, depending on how you add your feed and in which tray you add, you add your feed, you will be adding the uh, Q line or the feeding line. And that's what I wanted to show you, just an overall idea of what are operation lines. We're going to be working towards the mathematics behind the operation line of the flash, which you already know the slope, you already know the intercept. So let's see how we got those.